Hi designers, it's Haley with Silverman Branding and Design. And today I'm gonna to show you how to create a tincture bottle with a dropper, something you would use for CBD oil or hair care. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to create this tincture bottle in Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimension so that you can make your own 3D mockups without having to pay for any other software. So follow along. All right, so I have my reference image. It is on a layer that's called reference and I've locked it so that it doesn't move around. And then I have my art layer on top and I'm gonna start creating the shapes. I start by grabbing this rectangle tool and tracing around the edge because we wanna find that center point for the round objects and the round shapes. Um, I'm also gonna turn on my rulers, command R, Still highlight that rectangle and drag the ruler to the center. And for this one, I'm gonna keep the rectangle. I'm going to move it to the outline mode and I'm going to bring it down here to the base and use it for the outline of this bottle. So I'm gonna drag it to about this point because there is a little bit of the bottle that's underneath the cap and I want it to overlap when I create it in Adobe Dimension. So I will cut this in half now because I don't need the other half, the one half, because we're gonna revolve it around. So go ahead and cut that in half so you just have half a square. And now I'm gonna conform the box to my shape and I know these bottles typically come in a little bit, so I'm gonna imagine that there's a little recess down here that might be a little too steep. Let me bring it down slightly. Okay. And now I'm gonna grab my pen tool and drop a few more anchor points along this track so that I can make my shape. I'm using a combination of this radius tool and the pen tool to create this shape and it doesn't have to be super perfect. You have to interpret like a little bit about the shape, especially since now we're moving to the part that's underneath the cap. So how I imagine it to be is we've got this one corkscrew twist for the lid. It kind of is where the lid rests. And I'm just gonna create another little lip here. So that'll be where it rests. We don't have to create the whole spinning motion because it's not visible. But if you were gonna show some of your mock-ups with the um, tincture cap unlocked, then I would worry more about what's underneath the cap. But if you're just gonna use it how I'm gonna use it with the cap on top, then I don't have to worry about this so much. All right, now that we have that outside portion, we need to create the inside lining of this too. So I'm gonna select the line and I'm going to nudge it to the side, holding option to create a duplicate. I'm going to increase the stroke size to about seven point stroke. And I'm gonna to go to object, in path, and outline stroke. Now it's got a solid fill, so I'll flip that back to outline, grab my scissors tool, and trim those outside points, because we only need that inside line, we don't need the outside line. And you can use offset path for this, I just like this option because it's just the way that I do it. And I'm going to bring these points in. You can create some interesting um, depths if you wanted. Like normally there's a bit of variation down at the bottom here for those tinctures. Like the base is heavier, it's not as thin. So that's why we go about it this way and not with just an outline. Because same for up here, right? Like this glass is often smooth on the inside and the bump is only on the outside. So this gives us that ability to adjust. Now that I'm looking at it, we don't really need these points. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab these and join it. Okay, now that I've joined this together, I can come back here and round this point. I think I'll just go with it like this. Yeah, so it's a nice round opening for this. Again, we won't see it, so it's not really worth it, but we're going for it. And then I will grab this amber color or a brown color. It'll be amber when the glass material is applied. But for now, this is how it is. We'll just grab that color and keep moving on to the other ones. So let's go for the dropper now. Let's start with the bottom. I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool again, trace this shape. I'll outline it and make that black. 
black again so we can see it. Again, I won't need these inside lines, so I'm going to delete those and take it to the trash. And then I'm going to adjust my line just like I did for the others. So I'll put an anchor point there. I'll move an anchor point in and curve these until I'm happy with it. And then I'm also going to open this at the bottom again too so that it creates that hole. And I'm going to follow the same thing. We're going to nudge. We're going to increase the stroke. We are going to outline the stroke and then rotate around back to outline. And then I'm going to delete these outside points because we don't need them. And the only reason I'm leaving this length of the dropper here is because we need to have something that's the width of the shape. Otherwise, you'll just end up with a little tiny rotation around here. So you do have to have one side of it. Since we have the opening down here, you have to have one side that extends to the center point of the shape. And I'll connect these two, again, highlighting both. Command J to join. I'll select these two points and I'm going to round those. I think that'll end up looking really nice. And now I'm going to flip back to the solid fill and change to white since that'll be a clear glass dropper. Then we'll move to the part that you squish and I'm going to use this outline again. Let's make it black. It looks like there's a slight little tiny curve. I don't want it such a harsh little edge, so I will do that and again use scissors tool to cut that in half. And then I'll flip that to a solid fill. I will copy this shape and I'm going to bring it in slightly and up. And then I'll worry about these ridges in a second. I'm going to continue with this dropper bottle. And it looks like my image is a little bit off from the base or like the dropper is a little bit to the, to the left. So I am going to move this slightly just for this portion so that the dropper is to scale. And I will take my rectangle tool again, drag it to the width there. This needs to curve in, so I'll grab that and round it. And then using the scissors tool, snip, snip, and delete that line. Perfect. And then we will fill that with black. Now I do want to maybe curve this at the bottom a little bit since it did have a tapered effect right about here. So I'm going to curve that in and there's the dropper. Now you're probably wondering how to make the ridges because everything else has been something that would be matte and be solid. So to create those ridges, I'll take my circle tool. I'm actually going to move my guide back to the center here since that's where we were measuring this rectangle from. And I'll grab my circle tool, the ellipse tool, holding shift, and from the center I'm drawing a circle that goes around the entire diameter of this bottle. So I'll move it to the side now because this is the fun part where we go to outline, we come over to stroke, and we choose a dashed line. So now that I have these dashes, I'm going to choose a width, how about four point wide dash, maybe three was better, and then we'll do a four point gap. And then I'll go with two or three um, points for the stroke. Now we can turn all of these objects that we drew into 3D shapes. So come to your 3D and materials panel in Adobe Illustrator, and we'll start with these dotted lines. I'm just gonna click this one that says extrude. So now you can see that the lines have turned into really long strokes and that matches pretty much what we need. Um, you can add a bevel. Let's see how a bevel goes. We can add a convex one. We can add a classic outline. And what that's doing, it's easier to see when it's a lighter color. What that's doing is it's adding a little bit of a, um, 
it's not so harsh or squared off. So when we look at the height, we can adjust that. We can rotate it around and see how it's playing in the light. But I think that one looks really good. So we're gonna roll with that. I am gonna change those back to black so that it matches our reference material. And the rest are gonna go through this revolve cycle. So you just click revolve. If you drew your lines on the left side, you would want to change the direction to the right edge. It's opposite of whatever side you draw on. So just keep that in mind. If yours aren't turning out how mine are turning out, it's because you drew on the opposite side, but it's an easy button, it's just one extra step. Sometimes I like to draw on the left, I don't know why, um, but I'm trying to draw on the right more because it does just save me a little bit of time. All right, and I'm just going through clicking on each individually and then clicking revolve. And you can see all of my um, droppers are, or all of my objects are coming to life. Now looking at this, I'm not loving how that opening is coming out. So I'm actually going to select these. And while you have your material going, like you can still move some stuff around. Oop, and you can see my little point there got moved. Yeah, that looks like a better dropper. So don't be afraid if you've you know made a mistake, everything is changeable. Even after you already click 3D, you can see it live updates there, which I think is really cool. So you can make sure that even if you traced it exactly, you're still able to make changes that make it look more like the reference material. Because even if you're tracing, it doesn't always come out how you expect it. And then in Adobe Illustrator 2023, you're able to, from the 3D and materials panel, export 3D object. So you go through each of your pieces, click on them, export 3D object until they are all in your queue over here. And then I like to name them. We can call these ridges. Um, top one. That'll be top two. This will be top number three. This is our bottle. And this is our dropper. So now that you have all of them, make sure they're all selected. And the only file type you need is OBJ. So again, select all of them and click export. All right, designers, that was part one of how to create all of the shapes in Adobe Illustrator. Now we're gonna head over to Adobe Dimension. Join me in part two.